Hi. Welcome. That's surprising weather for this month, eh? I, got the, I brought from Europe all the wrong clothes, but still. So I'm really happy to be here. It's been interesting. I've been doing this talk for now a number of years. And usually I take a little bit of time also sometimes to reflect a little bit about where we are and what we do as Arduino. So we, every once in a while I give stats of different kind, but I wanted to reflect on the open source uh, side of things and how important open source it is for all of us and how open source software and now also hardware, they are sort of important building blocks of a lot of the things that uh, surround us. And so we started to look a little bit of, uh, you know, in terms of ecosystem in the world of microcontrollers and I can say we are probably the largest ecosystem and it's all, sit so I was making this little list of all the different types of hardware, the, the different processors where Arduino runs on. So the blue ones are the one that we support directly and the yellow ones are the one made by different communities around the world. So it is pretty amazing to see how all these different things and they're all sitting on top of this old uh, friend, which is the Arduino IDE, which has 30 million downloads uh, every year. So this means that it is a tool which is used clearly by a much larger number of people than the one who actually buy Arduino, official Arduino branded boards. So it is this kind of amazing tool that allows people to learn essentially one way of programming hardware and just apply it to a bunch of different uh, hardware. And I think this is, you know, it's, it's amazing to be part of this. It's always a bit tricky to, um, to work on something like this and stay true to the original principle of being simple, stay simple because there's always this pull to try to make it more complicated, more sophisticated with like a gazillion features. But I think one of the nice thing about this is that people, if they open it up, it only has like six or seven buttons. So, you know, it's designed to look not intimidating. Like, okay, you know, seven buttons, I could learn this, you know, how difficult it can be. So in a way, staying true to that kind of mission of being simple is one of the big things. But also, you know, it's a big piece of uh, open source right now. And so one of the things that I discussed here at the Maker Faire a number of times, for example, is this project that we used to call Chainsaw, but it's effectively, we, are do, we made steps to make it even simpler for people to port Arduino to new architectures. So we discussed this maybe a couple of years ago, and now it is a project that's kicking off and it's used on a number of versions of Arduino. And so one of the things that I'm gonna be trying to do now is to reach out to a number of the other people who build Arduino for other architectures and try to join this project because basically this removes 40% of, uh, of the code and makes it common to all the people. So you have to, you can, uh, you know, you can save, um, you, can, you can save time and energy and we can kind of work together to make it uh, simple uh, and easier for people to, to run Arduino multiple architecture. And so one of the things, you know, I would really want to talk to anybody who's responsible for porting Arduino on another architecture to join this thing and, you know, we're gonna be doing better work and work less. So, you know, what do you want more than that? In fact, one of the things that um, I'm working on that I wanna give you a preview is that I've, um, we've hired a new person who is gonna be the head of open source and community. We wanted to have a person that could spend their time creating better connections with all the different open source community we deal with and to just work together. I realize that there's a lot of duplication and repetitions and, um, and you know, uh, sorry, is, hi, people at the bottom of the room, is it okay if you quiet down a little bit? Sorry, it just gets a bit distracting. Um, so, no, no, it's okay, that's fine. So yeah, so the idea was try to have a person that would be tasked, 
every day to build better bridges to all the other open source communities and get them to work together because there's a huge amount of duplication and there's a lot of work that we could be doing together that we don't have to do individually if we have somebody that really tasked to do that. So um, I will reveal the name of this person uh, in the next few weeks, uh, but I just wanted to you know, put this bookmark saying that we're working on this to make it, to make it better. And so one of the things that I reflected in the last few months is that, you know, open source exists if we only, all of us participate. And it doesn't, you know, participate means even you just on a forum helping another beginner fix their problems in their project. That's already contributing to an open source project. You shouldn't mistake that with, oh, I'm just writing amazing code and, you know, just even helping somebody else on a forum, you're contributing to an open source uh, so there's a lot of things you can do, but the open source creators have to be in supported, but also incentivized, because effectively doing open source is all, it's a lot of work. And uh, so you can buy their products, you can help out with code and books, bugs, you can help them fix the document. Uh, you know, again, there are multiple ways you can keep open source alive and kicking. It's very, very important. We've had you know, a lot of situations where open source has become key to some important pieces of software in our life and then nobody was maintaining it, and then you know, it became a big problem. So one of the things that we reflected on, and I talked about it a little bit at Arduino Day in March, is that we decided to take $50,000, which is not a huge amount of money, but it's quite a bit of money for somebody like us, and we wanted to donate it back to a bunch of open source projects that kind of are the foundations of what we do. And I'm sort of challenging all the other companies that are basically based their business model on open source to also donate money to the open source because there's a lot of open source projects that don't have, especially the software ones, they don't have a way to support themselves. Yeah, they can sell t-shirts, but you know, how many t-shirts can you sell to support, you know? But if we all donate, you know, if all the companies that are using open source give $50,000, you know, they can, then these open source projects can maybe pay their maintainer to work on the project full time. You know? so, so I decided to divide it in uh, donations of $5,000. So the first five recipients I will announce uh, now. And next week we will give them the money. <laughs> uh, and then in October I will announce the next five recipients. Classic, you know, the Free Software Foundation is important for what we do. Uh, so, and so it's one of the, found, it's the foundation, at the foundation of what we do. Sorry for the bad joke. Um, the Linux Foundation is another important player in what we do. Uh, we both use Linux on the servers that serve you the Arduino website or the libraries that you use. We use Linux inside Arduino products. Uh, you know, we use Linux on the laptops in the office. So it's only Obvious that we do that. Uh, Creative Commons, again, it's not strictly open source, but it's very important for what we do. When we decided to release hardware as open source, back then there were not, well, I'm, let's put it this way, I didn't really know if there were any open source hardware license, so I thought, you know, Creative Commons, great idea, you know, to treat hardware as a piece of culture. People have used Creative Commons for music, for poetry, for, you know, so why don't we use it for hardware? So it's important and we want to support that. Processing Foundation, that's very important. Arduino essentially derives from the processing project, the processing language. All the principles that we follow were set up in that project. And um, because, you know, they, when, uh, when I, we started working on this stuff, that a lot of the things that you find in Arduino come from that Pro, I don't know if you're familiar with processing. It's a sort of programming language based on Java that was designed at the MIT to teach uh, artists and designers how to program and how to build their artwork. And so, you know, that's one. And, and so one, so the fifth one is a bit interesting for us. Um, but we decided also to basically donate $5,000 to the Risk Five Foundation, which means we'll be joining as a 
Silver member, I think it's called. You know, we're interested in open source hardware. We've been doing open source hardware for a long time, and it's interesting for us to at least be in a position to be ob observing what happens uh, around the innovation inside processors. And um, so I thought it was great for us to be in there. I don't think the whole ecosystem is mature enough for what we do right now, but it is important to be part of these conversations and sit down and have these conversations so that we can maybe, you know, bring a little bit of a of our experience and, and expertise to maybe help take these things to a different direction. So, I don't know, it's, it's interesting. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a step forward. So yeah, the, the other five will be announced in October. Um, most likely at the Maker Fair in Rome, which is uh, mid of October. So actually, you should, come to the Maker Fair in Rome. Also the location, uh, even if it rains, you're not, you're not gonna get wet because it's all covered. So, you know, but also, you know, Rome in October usually doesn't rain. But it's an interesting way to look at the different perspective because it's, in the number of visitors is as big as this one, uh, but it's a different perspective, it's a different way to look at makers. It's a little, you know, so if you get the chance, come over and listen live to the other five names. But again, as I said, I would challenge other companies that have way more money than we do to also donate at least this amount of money to other open source projects. We can really help uh, open source um, move forward. Right, so some updates about things that we've been doing while I've been away from here. Um, so we, worked a little bit on this Arduino Nano format. The Arduino Nano is a very, very popular uh, board. A lot of people use it, but it is kind of dated. You know, it's been, you know, probably 10 years now that it existed. And so we wanted to reimagine it, but also reimagine the format. So it is still pin compatible with the classic Arduino Nano, but we make it uh, essentially flat with castellated pins, so this means that you can use this as a module and you can solder it on a different board, for example. So it's really become an, a small ingredient for a project. And also we try to look at it as a family. So the first one, we call it every, because it's, you know, it's, it's a, for every project, everywhere. It's, it's, it's software compatible, drop-in replacement for the classic Arduino Nano, but it is, um, powered by a more powerful processor that has more memory, more peripherals, and all of that. And um, it's still the same iconic format. It is robust and, uh, you know, well, well made, in my opinion, in Italy. Uh, because a lot of people use, you know, some Arduino Nanos, they source compatible Arduino Nanos, they source from different people. And some of them are, you know, self-destructing, let's put it this way. And so we wanted to basically provide something that would be affordable, but also reliable. And, you know, it's gonna be, it's available right now from the Arduino website to pre-order for $9.90, which I think is a pretty, you know, uh, low cost price for something that's, uh, thank you. <laughs> for something that's, you know, made in Europe, so clearly, you know, costs. You know, these people get healthcare and pensions and maternity leave, you know, those things cost money, you know. It's quality of life is not free. Okay, but yeah, so I'm really happy that we can basically help people who have made a product, project based on this technology can have a drop-in replacement, which is cheap, but better. We also extended the format a little bit to support also 3.3 volt. Uh, boards. So now we have this Nano 33 IoT. Again, it's still the iconic Nano format. It's based on a Cortex M0 processor. It's got this U blocks uh, module that uh, provides Wi Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. And, you know, 
we just love those Ublox modules. You see them everywhere on our connected products. And uh, also, this secure has got a crypto chip. It will take a very long time to explain what this crypto chip does, but it's a secure element that makes the communication and the authentication with cloud services based on this hardware token. So it is way more secure than any other software-based uh, technology. And again, this one, we tried to compress the price, and it's available for, for pre-order for about uh, $18, more or less. So that's the, again, a way for people to be able to build a secure, a connected project. Uh, because again, there's a lot of IoT hardware out there, and it's a lot of it is great, but we got really, really concerned about the security. So, you know, we started adding these crypto chips from microchip everywhere. And we're also launching, but this is more, more than the launch is kind of an announcement. This Arduino Nano 33 BLE, it's a Bluetooth uh, smart or low energy, what you want to call it, board. Uh, still in the nano format, another Ublox uh, Nina module. And, um, but it also comes, there, there's a version that comes full of sensors. So uh, it has a digital MEMS microphone, accelerometer, gyroscope, uh, uh, environmental sensors, gesture sensor, light sensors. So the idea is to have a node which has a bunch of sensors on board that's ready to connect via BLE, so that you can use it for a lot of applications where all the sensors on board allow you to build a million projects without having to you know, connect anything. So we wanted something that would just allow people to build projects without having to even touch the hardware. So the, the, the basic one, it only has the accelerometer on it, is about $19, and I, and I, and I forgot the cost of the bigger one. But, uh, the bigger one is very interesting because we have some surprises on the software stack that I will reveal in the next uh, few weeks. And, um, but it is, for example, the combination of sensors and uh, processor and connectivity, for example, will allow you to run small machine learning algorithms uh, on the hardware. So you can grab the data, apply the, the algorithm in, and connect directly from the device I think it's gonna be very interesting as a, as a way to uh, start off with this uh, machine learning on the micro edge. Yeah, that was, oh, it's 29.50, great. Um, so another thing that we uh, announced is that we've been working to build this Arduino SIM card, so a lot of people build um, IoT project based on uh, GSM connectivity or 3G, LTE, whatever. So this SIM card uh, allows you very simply to get started. You manage it from the Arduino website. Um, it comes from, um, uh, it comes with a three months free trial with 10 megabytes and 10 megabytes for IoT projects is a bit, it's quite a bit. Uh, and then it's quite cheap, it's about $1.50 per month but it includes global roaming, so you can use it in multiple countries. It is available right now only in the US and then Europe will follow, and it's powered by this uh, ARM Pelion connectivity management, which is a whole infrastructure that ARM has built around that, so we make it very, very simple to use that technology from an Arduino point of view. And this is gonna be very interesting because a lot of the IoT projects that we're building now are based on connectivity, that's uh, GSM, LTE, narrowband IoT. So the SIM card allows us to make it even simpler for people to build this kind of project. Uh, one thing that I, if you have the chance to go to the Arduino uh, booth, you should check out this Arduino Science Kit Physics Lab. It's a kit that we developed with Google, and it uses the um, Google, um, uh, Google Science Journal app. It's, an, it's a mobile phone app that you can use to get the data from this board, which is using Bluetooth. And you can do a bunch of experiments. This is designed for kids in junior high school. So they can learn about physics. 
the whole thing is themed around the fun fair, so every ride of the fun fair teaches about something in physics. So you build the example, you connect it to the phone, you gather the data on the phone. And so in a lot of different parts of the world now, kids have smartphones, and they become, they are so, why use a computer when they're looking at the phone all the time anyway? So the smartphone is becoming a very interesting place where to experiment uh, with education, and this kit I think is really cool and you should check it out. We also did this, uh, a lot of people over the years have been asking us to provide some kind of a certification that says, oh, I am an Arduino says, I know about Arduino. So after many years, we built this thing. It's based around the starter kit, so you learn Arduino through the Arduino starter kit, then you answer a bunch of questions on this uh, a website or you just take the exam and then you get a certificate that says that you have a, a certain level of knowledge of Arduino and in a lot of countries around the world people have been asking really really strongly about this because in a lot of places they need something official that says that they know how to do something and so we wanted to uh, accommodate that a request and it's available in the US now, you can check it out on the Arduino website. There's also, if you go to the booth, you should check out also this Arduino CTC Go, which is the last generation of a big education program that we've been running around the world. This is designed, uh, designed by the fantastic team that we have in Malmo, Sweden, which is headed by my co-founder, David Quartieres. They do all these education programs. This is for high schools, and it introduces kids to uh, programming, electronics, robotics, hardware, and a bunch of things. So if you have the chance, go check it out. I have one little update about the Arduino cloud. Let's see if this thing works. So we launched this IoT cloud, which the, design, the idea is to make it super, super simple to get something going in IoT. And we have some examples where literally in three minutes, end to end, you have a device securely connected to the network that you can control over the cloud. So what we have been introducing now, we introduced the ability to use complex properties. Before you could only use simple things like temperature, humidity, speed. Now you can deal with locations and you can also plot the position of objects on a map and you can now drag around the elements and move them around so you can customize the dashboard. So what is important is just that instead of trying to do like a big launch with a bunch of features, we started off with a small amount of feature and now every month we have a small announcement with new features, new things. And you know, it's a product that's very, very simple and it's growing, it's free to use. You can, you can, you can use a number of devices for free we're expanding the number of devices that it supports, so you know, you should check it out. Uh, it's, it's designed to be super, super simple, and we have a lot of people successfully building projects. Somebody was asking about the FPGA ID that we discussed last year. Uh, we built it, throw it away, rebuilt it, throw it away, rebuilt it, maybe a couple of times, because we wanted the user experience to be super, super, super simple. And now this is kind of a screenshot of the latest version. This, pro this example is called Freddy Krueger for some reason, but I don't know exactly why. But you know, I don't know, I'll, ask you, I'll check that with the... But the idea is that it's, it's coming along as a very powerful drag and drop uh, development system where you pick these big IP blocks, you drag them on the screen, you connect them, and you can build fairly complex FPGA projects without knowing anything about Verilog or any other technology. So it's coming. I promise it's coming. And one more thing that I wanted to uh, touch upon in my last 58 seconds is um, that uh, as I was, I started off talking about the Arduino IDE. And so we know that clearly it is a technology that's very, in a way, mature, and we need to look at different directions. So for example, we built the online cloud IDE Create, which now has about a million uh, regular users, because we have a bunch more users, but the ones who use it on a regular basis, it's a million people. But we wanted to evolve also on the desktop, so this is a screenshot of a new prototype for an Arduino IDE 2.0, which is based on this framework called TEIA. 
um, essentially it uses the Arduino command line interface in the background to do all the uh, download cores, download the libraries, compile, upload, and then it got a nice interface on top which uh, will allow us to have a fully functioning debugger so you can debug all the code. It supports a lot of, uh, it will support multiple languages. It supports a more sort of quote unquote professional style of development. So this is just the beginning. It's just a, it's a prototype that we built just in a few days. As soon as we move from this stage to an alpha, which will mean just a few weeks, then we will open source it for people to start contributing. And it's gonna be the base for us to be able to have a development environment which supports both beginners and then uh, you can click a button and say I'm now a pro and then this bigger interface will basically unfold and then you can, uh, you can use all the classic, uh, the classic things that, um, that you expect from a more professional IDE all integrated with the usual libraries, cores, and everything else. So, you know, I expect the people to help us out and, uh, and help us take this uh, to, to, a, to a place where it can replace, hopefully, the, the classic IDE. Thank you.